Hello, in this lecture, we'll take a look at business transactions involving accounts receivable. So we will be able to journalize transactions related to accounts receivable, describe the effects of each transaction on total assets, total liabilities, owner's equity, and net income. So we're going to have the same type of transactions, same type of questions, but now we're going to uh, look at the receivable cycle rather than the cash cycle. We will still ask the same questions, though, which will be that, is cash affected? And then if it is affected, is it going up or down? And what will be the effect on cash? And therefore, after uh, doing that, we can then see what will happen to the other side of the transaction. Once again, why do we do that? Because cash is going to be affected very often. Therefore, most people understand which way cash will be going and whether or not to debit or credit it before they start understanding other types of accounts. Then we could figure out the second type of the account and see why it makes sense. Now, if cash isn't affected, then we want to say, what is re what did we receive most times and go from there? So let's see what that means in terms of accounts receivable. So first transaction, perform worked on account for 60000 So that's what generally happens in a, a business. If we were a bookkeeper or something, we would perform work on account. What does that mean? We did the work but have not yet received the cash. The form related to that would generally be an invoice. We'd send out an invoice, which would be the bill to the recipient, an invoice to us represented the fact that we did work and they owe us money. So therefore, is cash affected? In this case, no, it's not affected because we did work, but we didn't get the money yet. So what did we get? The second question, what did we get? We got an IOU. That IOU is going to be called accounts receivable. So we're going to re report the work when we do it. That's called the revenue recognition principle, which is an accrual principle. And we're going to record the fact that people owe us money when we do the work. So Accounts receivable is, a, is an asset. We can see that it is all, all the other assets. They have debit balances. We need to make it go up because people owe us more money. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. If we debit receivable, we're going to have to credit something. What are we going to credit? Why are we people going to owe us money in the future? Because we did work. Why do we do work? In order to generate revenue. And that's the revenue account down here. You can see it has a credit balance. It, it only goes up. Revenue only goes up. It doesn't go down. Net income can go down, but revenue generally only goes up. If we do work, we get paid or we don't get paid. It only goes one way. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it, which in this case would be another credit. So if we take a look at the transaction, then we have accounts receivable being debited. So instead of debiting cash, we didn't get cash yet. We got a receivable. We're going to debit the receivable. Accounts receivable has a debit balance. It's going to go up in the debit direction to the 60000 then the other side is revenue. So we got the revenue here. Here's our revenue. Uh, that's a credit. This is a credit. Therefore, revenue is going up to 384.6. What happens to net income? Net income was 88.855, which is this number of revenue minus expenses, which is how you calculate net income. That representing a credit balance, not a negative number. And then it went up by 60,000 to uh, 148.855, which makes sense because we earned income. What happens to the accounting equation? Well, assets over here, which are the green numbers, went up because this uh, increase to accounts receivable equals liabilities. No effect on the liabilities here, plus owner's equity. Well, if assets went up and nothing happened to liabilities, then owner's equity must be going up as it did in the credit direction here, represented by the net income went up. Therefore, the total equity went up in the credit direction. Let's try another one. Received cash on account for 60000 First question, is cash affected? In this case, it is because we received cash. Okay, so then we can start our journal entry without even knowing what else is going on. Really, we could say, well, cash is going up because we received it. Cash is a debit balance represented by the fact that it does not have brackets. How do I make something go up? We do the same thing to it, which in this case would be a debit. So we debit cash and then we're going to credit something. What are we going to credit? Well, you might be saying, well, we got 60000 because we did work. That's true. And you would think, well, maybe revenue should go up with a credit. But we did work in the past, of course. This is the work that we sent the invoice out last time for. That's usually the process. We sent the invoice out. Now it's kind of like we got the check in the mail. So we can't really credit uh, revenue again. What happens is that we're going to debit, uh, credit the accounts receivable, meaning people owe us 60000 They have now paid us 60000 Therefore, the receivable needs to go down. How do I make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. So it would look something like this. We would have a uh, debit to cash, cash going up. We can see the cash has a debit balance account. If we debit it again, we're going to see it goes up to here. Debit and a debit make it go up. Same thing, make something go up. Then accounts receivable has a credit balance. Uh, we're going to credit it, I should say. Accounts receivable has a debit balance on the trial balance. We are going to credit it. Therefore, that's a debit, that's a credit. That's going to make it go down. 
What's the what's the effect on net income? None, because we recorded the sixty thousand increase last time when we earned it, not when we received the cash. That's the accrual basis of revenue recognition. And if we look at the uh, accounting equation, this is that weird one again, where you might be saying, well, assets went up with cash, but assets also went down with receivable. Therefore, the net asset, nothing happened. We know that something did happen in reality. Of course, we got a better asset. We got we got rid of the IOU and we got the cash. I'd rather have the cash than the IOU, although IOUs are good because I'm hoping that will turn into cash within a 30 day time period. So there's no effect across the board on the accounting equation for this transaction. Next one, performed work on account for 27,000. Notice, same transaction here because we're talking about the accounts receivable cycle. This is what happens in accounts receivable. We do work. So if we did a bookkeeper, we do more bookkeeping. Then we sent out the invoice and we sent out the invoice and we have not yet received the cash. So is cash affected? No, we did the work and we sent out the invoice. What did we get instead? Well, they owe us money. So they basically have an IOU. We have an agreement that we're going to do work and they're going to pay us for it. And we did the work. So now they owe us the money, the receivable therefore is an asset. Asset needs to go up. How do I make something go up? We do the same thing to it, which in this case would be a debit. So we're debiting the accounts receivable instead of cash for doing the work because we haven't yet got the, the uh, money yet. And if we debit something, we're gonna also going to have to credit something. What are we going to credit? Well, why are they going to pay us in the future? Because we did what we do and we earned revenue. Revenue being down here on the income statement. Notice this blue line represents the, the difference between the balance sheet and the income statement. So the income statement accounts are revenue and expenses. Uh, revenue only goes up only one way has a credit balance represented by the brackets how do we make something go up we do the same thing to it which in this case would be another credit which we already knew because we debited receivable so it's going to look the same as that first transaction here where we debit the receivable it goes from zero to up 27 to here so we got a debit and a debit makes it go up then the other side being the revenue so the revenue going here so we've got the credit balance represented by the brackets plus another credit makes the credit go up what happens to net income Net income being calculated by revenue minus expenses being at this number before the transaction goes up by 27 to here. Effect on the accounting equation, assets are going to go up because receivables are an asset and they went up. No effect on the liability counts you can see here. And if assets went up and there's no effect on liabilities, then owner's equity must be increasing, which you can see that net income increased. And net income is part of owner's equity, which also includes the beginning capital balance there and so it increased as well next transaction perform work on account for thirty-two thousand. that looks very familiar because that's what happens on accounts receivable cycle the accounts receivable cycle means we did work and then we're going to collect on it later so now we did more work for thirty-two thousand. is cash affected no because we did the work on account what did we get instead we got a receivable we got an iou so we already have that twenty thousand twenty seven thousand from the last iou that's owed to us we did more work we sent out another invoice that's a debit balance. It's going to have to go up again by the 32,000. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. If we debit that, what are we going to credit? Revenue. Revenue is going to go up again. So we earned revenue that has a credit balance. It only goes up. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another credit. So if we look at the account, uh, the transaction, once again, we're seeing that the account Siebel had a 27,000 for what someone owed us before. And now we're going to debit it, increasing it to people owe us 59,000 at this point. And then we're going to credit the revenue when we sent out the invoice on an accrual basis when we earn it, not when we receive the cash. We got a credit balance plus another credit makes the credit go up. What happens to net income? Uh, revenue minus expenses from here up by the 32 that we build to here. Accounting equation. Assets are going to go up by uh, the accounts receivable. Nothing happens to the liabilities here. And the owner's equity, if this goes up, then the owner's equity has to go up. Next transaction. Receive cash on account. So now we got a check in the mail that we received the cash. So is cash affected? Yes, uh, we received cash. Is it going up or down? It's going up. We received it. Cash has a debit balance. How do I make something go up? We do the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. If we debit cash, what are we going to credit? Well, why do people give us cash in a business? You might say because we earned it. We did work. We earned revenue. So you might be thinking we we'll credit revenue again. But remember, we did it. We got it on account, meaning we didn't do the work today. We did the work in the past, already build it. We already recorded the revenue. We're not going to credit revenue again. What happens is we have this IOU, of course, of the 59,000. Someone paid us it. They paid us the 27 of it. That's what happens in accounts receivable. We do work. It goes up. We get the check in the mail. It goes down. In this case, it's going to have to go down. So this is a debit balance. We're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case will be a credit. So if we take a look at the transaction, then it looks something like this cash goes up we had cash here we debited by twenty-seven thousand, bringing it up to here 
then accounts receivable right underneath it, our second favorite asset, uh, is going from here down by the 27. So this is a debit, that's a credit, that's the opposite thing to it. Takes us down to that 32 that was still owed to us from that other job that we did. And therefore, that's the transaction. Notice there's no effect on net income here from this transaction. Why? Because even though we got cash, we did the work in the past. And according to the, to the revenue recognition principle, which is an accounting principle, we recognize revenue when we earn it, not when we receive the cash. Therefore, if we take a look at the accounting equation, assets, what happens to assets? Well, you might think, well, cash went up. Why isn't it going up? Because receivable went down. So once again, this is that weird one where it went up and then it went down. No effect on anything. No effect on assets. No effect on anything else because nothing happened down here. Accounting equation stays the same. So we are now able to journalize transactions related to accounts receivable. Describe the effects of each transaction on total assets, total liabilities, owner's equity, and net income.